Today, we'll be discussing air stripping, a widely used technology for removing volatile organic compounds, VOCs, from contaminated groundwater. VOCs, such as benzene, toluene, and trichloroethylene, are common pollutants in groundwater due to industrial activities, leaking storage tanks, and improper waste disposal. Air stripping is an efficient and relatively straightforward process that exploits the volatility of these compounds to transfer them from water to air. The goal is to reduce VOC concentrations in the groundwater to acceptable levels for environmental and public health protection. Let's break this process down step by step. The fundamental principle behind air stripping is the difference in volatility between water and VOCs. Volatility refers to how easily a compound transitions from a liquid phase to a gaseous phase. VOCs have a high volatility, meaning they evaporate readily when exposed to air. Air stripping leverages this property through a process called mass transfer, where VOCs move from the contaminated water into the air. This transfer is driven by Henry's law, which states that the amount of gas that dissolves in a liquid is proportional to its partial pressure in the gas phase. By introducing large volumes of air to contaminated water, the partial pressure difference encourages VOCs to volatilize out of the water and into the air. Now, let's take a look at the major components of a typical air stripping system. The air stripping tower. This is the central piece of equipment, usually a vertical column filled with packing material like plastic or ceramic media. The packing material provides a large surface area for the interaction between water and air. Water Distribution System Contaminated groundwater is pumped into the top of the tower and distributed evenly across the packing material to maximize contact with the air. Air Supply System Air is blown into the bottom of the tower, creating a countercurrent flow where air moves upward as water flows downward. This countercurrent design maximizes the removal efficiency of VOCs. Exhaust System the air that exits the top of the tower contains the stripped VOCs. In some cases, this air is treated with activated carbon or thermal oxidizers to remove the VOCs before it is released into the atmosphere. In a typical air stripping process, groundwater containing VOCs is countercurrently contacted with air in a packed tower. The packed tower is filled with packing materials for an increased contact area for mass transfer. The flow of water in VOC stream is countercurrent because clean water enters at the top, flows down by gravity, and VOC's contaminated water is fed upward along with the airflow from the blower at the bottom. The VOCs are transferred to the gas phase during the intimate gas-liquid contact. The equilibrium distribution between gas and water phases can be described by Henry's law. The VOCs from the exhaust must be treated by passing the VOC-laden air in an activated carbon column. The effectiveness of an air stripping system depends on several factors. First, air to water ratio. It is the ratio between the air loading rate and the water loading rate. A higher ratio increases the contact between air and water, improving VOC removal. Second, tower height and packing material. Taller towers and efficient packing materials provide greater surface area for mass transfer, enhancing the stripping process. Packing materials used in air stripping towers are generally categorized into two types, random packing and structured packing. Each type has distinct characteristics. Random packing are irregularly shaped pieces of material that are randomly dumped into the column. Common examples include pole rings, which are cylindrical rings with multiple openings to increase surface area and enhance liquid distribution, rashig rings, which are cylindrical hollow tubes that provide a moderate surface area for mass transfer, and saddle shaped packing curved pieces that reduce pressure drop while offering good surface area. These materials are cost-effective and easy to install, making them suitable for moderate flow rates and relatively simple applications. However, they can result in uneven distribution if not carefully managed. They may also clog over time in systems with high particulate loads. Structured packing are carefully engineered materials arranged in an organized pattern within the column. Examples include corrugated sheets or grids made of metal or plastic. They provide highly uniform flow distribution, offer lower pressure drops compared to random packing, and show higher efficiency due to increased surface area and optimized liquid gas contact. Nevertheless, they are more expensive than random packing, and more complex to install and maintain. Third, temperature. Warmer water increases VOC volatility, improving removal efficiency. 
Fourth, specific VOC characteristics. Compounds with higher Henry's law constants, like benzene, are more easily removed than those with lower constants. While air stripping is effective for many VOCs, it has limitations. For example, it's not suitable for non-volatile or semi-volatile contaminants. Additionally, the treated air requires careful handling to prevent secondary air pollution. Air stripping has been used extensively in groundwater remediation, industrial wastewater treatment, and municipal water treatment. For instance, in a case study from California, an air stripping system successfully removed trichloroethylene from groundwater near a manufacturing site, reducing concentrations to below regulatory limits. However, air stripping is most effective when integrated with other technologies. For example, it is often paired with granular activated carbon filters for treating both water and exhaust air to ensure comprehensive pollutant removal. In summary, air stripping is a practical and efficient technology for removing VOCs from contaminated groundwater. While it's not a one size fits all solution, air stripping remains a cornerstone of groundwater treatment strategies. Its effectiveness lies in its simplicity, adaptability, and ability to handle a wide range of VOC pollutants. Finally, let's look at one example for its design calculation. The major design equation for the required height of air stripper tower is recommended in the AWWA design book. In this equation, Z is the packing height. L is the liquid loading. KLA refers to the overall mass transfer coefficient, which is a function of Henry's constant and the individual mass transfer coefficient of the VOC in both liquid and gas phases. The influent and effluent concentrations of VOCs are also decisive. The R in the equation is called stripping factor, a crucial parameter for determining the ability of an air stripper to remove a specific contaminant. The stripping factor R is affected by both the liquid gas loading and the Henry's law constant. The overall mass transfer coefficient KLA can be calculated by the Sherwood Holloway equation. The alpha and N values are specific to different packing materials. Example, a well water is contaminated with 500 micrograms per liter per chloroethylene. The water must be treated to the maximum contaminant level MCL of 5 micrograms per liter using a packed air stripper. Given the following parameters, what is the required height for the following conditions? This problem is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is to identify each parameter in the design equation. The KLA is given, so no need to search elsewhere. Influent concentration is 500 micrograms per liter and effluent concentration is 5 micrograms per liter. Molar density of water is something we know, and liquid loading is given. The only thing that needs to be calculated before using the design equation is to find the stripping factor. Note that the Henry's law constant must be dimensionless. As a result, we find that stripping factor is 8.5. Substituting all the parameters, using L equals to 80 cubic meters per square meter per hour, KLA equals to 50 per hour, we can find that the packing height is about 8.13 meters.